Hi, all you beautiful patriots. Welcome to another episode of As I See It. It's been three weeks since the election, and it's becoming harder and harder and harder for Trump and his supporters to deny that Biden has won. They're still doing it. Trump still has not conceded. But as many of us know, Trump doesn't have to concede for this to take place for the Biden inauguration to take place. What we have seen over the last three weeks is just the most insane attempts by the current administration and his enablers to deny the reality of the election. And that is that Joe Biden won. And not only did Joe Biden win, but he won by more votes ever cast for a single candidate in the history of the United States. And I believe his popular vote lead has grown by 6 million. And of course, he won the Electoral College. Did you all know that President Trump has tried 10 different tactics to steal the election. I'm going to go through the 10 things that Trump has done to try to steal the election because some of them are still going on. And I think it's really important that even when Biden does get inaugurated in uh, January, this isn't going to go away. Trumpism isn't going to go away. And I think it's important to keep recognizing the flaws or the holes or the cracks in our democracy so that we can fix them for future wannabe dictators. So I'm going to go through the 10 ways that Trump tried to steal the election. As usual, I've got probably 20 sources for everything that I'm going to talk about to back up what I'm talking about in the description of this video. And if you like talking about things that matter, politics, life, and social issues, be sure to subscribe, click the bell for notifications so you never miss a thing. Still a brand new channel, don't know, don't really have a schedule yet, but we'll see. That'll all get worked out. Number one, the first way that Donald Trump tried to steal the election started in 2016. He thought he might have to try to steal the 2016 election, but surprise, he won. To everybody's surprise. I think even to his, from what I heard. And so in 2016, he started planting the seed of election rigging and voter fraud. I mean, he started planting the seeds then. In case, we all knew. I mean, it's just amazing it's not amazing. We all knew we would end up here someday, but he started planting the seed of, of doubt in the process of our elections in 2016 by claiming that dead people were voting, that by claiming that dogs were voting. Did you vote, Sadie? <laughs> she didn't vote. <laughs> by claiming that Hillary was literally busing people over the border, illegal immigrants to cast ballots. So he started planting the seed that our elections were rigged and that it was going to be a fraud back in 2016. That was step one for trying to steal the election. Step two was trying to prosecute and arrest his rivals. Y'all remember that? Just a couple months ago, he was literally calling for investigation, prosecution, and arrest of Joe Biden and President Obama for doing things that they didn't do. Spying on my campaign. We could do a whole other video about the FISA warrant and the Mueller report. There, let's be clear. Joe Biden and Obama did nothing illegal, but Trump's strategy for trying to steal the election before the election was to try to get his opponent arrested. Who does that? Vladimir Putin does that. <laughs> yeah, other dictators do that. If you can't find legal ways to silence your opposition, actually ask all the people that Russia poisoned. Ask the, the was it the Saudi prince? who beheaded the uh, reporter, this is how dictators get rid of any opposition. If they either arrest them or silence them in some other way, death, beheading, poison, or like I've talked about in the very first video, talking about all of this, Back in the day, what I studied, Russian history and Nazi history even, is they would put people on, on trains and buses out to the countryside never to be heard from again. And I wonder, I have you ever wondered what the media was feeling before the election? The uncertainty for reporters who don't agree with Trump? I bet they were scared. So that was number two, trying to dispose of through arrest unlawful accusations, just ridiculous accusations, trying to get rid of his 
his opponents. That was number two for trying to steal the election. Third tactic he used for trying to steal the election or is using is mail-in voter fraud scam. This whole scam, this whole lie that there is widespread voter fraud when people vote by mail. Now, it's it's just almost too ironic to think that the reason we had to vote by mail is because of his ineptitude, his inability, his his unwillingness to do anything to control this pandemic. We know from the Bob Woodward interview that he knew it was bad, and yet he came out and downplayed it to us. People, this this excuse that he didn't want to panic, make people panic, is just, that's not how you don't make people panic. You don't lie behind the scenes, or I'm sorry, you don't tell the truth behind the scenes and say, yeah, it's horrible. Oh my God, it's so bad. And then come out to the public and say, oh yeah, it's not bad. Don't worry, don't wear masks. You don't need to close down schools. You that's not how, that's not, that's not it. <laughs> that's not it. That is not, that that lie that he, he acted in that way in order to prevent people from panicking is just complete bull. I mean, that's just not how, that's just, you know, it's just like I'm flabbergasted. I can barely speak because that lie is just so stupid. So Trump trying to play plant seeds of doubt in the vote by mail process. He didn't want people voting by mail for a number of reasons. Number one, he wanted to be able to declare victory on election night. That was his thing. If he can declare victory on election night, then he can cast doubt in anything that happens, any ballot counting or anything like that afterwards. And by millions and millions of people voting by mail, it took that piece of the puzzle away. The second thing is because I've said this before in another video, Democrats believed the science. Democrats, for the most part, believed the uh, doctors. His base, his people said, yeah, no, we don't believe in it. So they weren't going to vote by mail. So by casting doubt in the vote by mail process, he was already delegitimizing Democratic voters. He was or, or disenfranchising Democratic voters and delegitimizing our votes. So that was the that was the third step and really just putting a lot of doubt on the whole process of mail in ballot uh, mail in voting. And if you want to know another reason, I have another theory about that. I'm going to put a link up here to a video about mail in voter fraud and how it's really not real. And I did a video about that a couple months ago now, and I talked about the real reason I think he didn't want people to vote by mail. And uh, check out that video. I won't get into that here, but check that out. And the fact is there's zero evidence, zero evidence. I've got so many sources, so many sources, more sources than you've ever seen. I got the best sources in the video description below there is absolutely zero evidence and again check out this video that there is widespread mail-in voter fraud or any voter fraud of any any kind and uh in fact what studies have shown since the election is that strategy backfired on him in districts or in counties where he won or where republicans won in the midterms by absentee ballot or mail-in ballot ballot he scared his people so much into not voting by mail and then they didn't show up so he lost he, he lost votes he could have had by scaring his base about mail-in votes and scaring them into thinking that they were fraud they would they wouldn't be counted or so they didn't vote so he lost so it backfired on him yeah. number four and how donald trump tried to steal the election he encouraged his base to vote twice. That's right. On one hand, he's screaming voter fraud. Oh my God, the election is rigged. On the other hand, out the other side of his mouth, he's saying, yeah, you should vote twice, mostly in North Carolina. He was on the campaign trail saying, yeah, you should vote twice. Vote by mail and then show up and vote in person. And he said, yeah, because we'll see how secure their system is. So not only is this a blatant attempt to get his people to cheat to get him to steal the election, it's he's he's telling his base to commit felonies. <laughs> I believe it's a felony. Is it a felony to commit voter fraud? Yeah. And he was he was encouraging people to vote twice. So that was number four. The fifth way Donald Trump tried to steal the election is by falsely falsely claiming victory on election night. 
Yeah, you remember that? He went on election night and said, I won, even though like millions and millions of ballots hadn't been counted, mail-in ballots hadn't been counted. I don't even think he was winning in the, no, he wasn't even winning in the electoral college count, much less the popular vote count. Nevertheless, he went on national television the night of the election and said, I won. And he's been saying, I think he finally stopped, but for weeks, days, he kept saying, I won. Despite the evidence, despite the math, despite the statistics, despite tradition, ensure a peaceful transition of power and a fair and accurate election, he went on national TV and falsely claimed victory. That was the fifth way he tried to steal the election. Number six, post-election, he did everything in his power, his campaign and his attorneys and his people who work for him and people on his behalf filed, I don't know, 30 lawsuits I think we're up to now, and I think they've won two. They filed all kinds of lawsuits across the country to try to get states to stop counting ballots. President of the United States of America tried every legal avenue he could, every avenue, not even legal, and we're going to get to that in a minute. He had tried every avenue he could think of to make sure your vote was not counted, and especially black people. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. But targeted key battleground states like Pennsylvania and Michigan, and he did his best to make sure they didn't count all the mail-in ballots. And how did they do that? By making stuff up. They literally made stuff up. They literally said, well, the, we there there's proof of fraud. We have affidavits. Remember Kellyanne, whatever her, oh, whatever her name is, I can't stand her. A big, big pile of, yeah, it was a, it was a prop. It was a fake. All these affidavits that say that they have seen voter fraud, when that was actually investigated, it was proven once again, like everything else that comes out of her mouth and Trump's mouth, to be absolutely false. There are not hundreds or thousands of affidavits from poll workers saying that they witnessed voter fraud, and that is why they felt the should stop being counting. Everything was disproven. In fact, I said this in a previous video, when Trump's lawyers went to court and the judges flat out said do, is show me the evidence of voter fraud. Where are these affidavits? They, they backed down because they didn't want to commit perjury. So no, there is, when, when your lawyer or when Trump's lawyers go to court and when asked for evidence back down, that should be ding, 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 ding. Something's not right in China. <laughs> Something's not right in the United States. That should be a clue. So why are people still holding on to this stop counting, these ballots are fraudulent, or we have affidavits and witnesses? Why are people still holding on to that when all you have to do is look at the transcripts to see that when his lawyers go to court, they back down because it's not true? Number seven, the seventh way that Donald Trump tried to steal the election is by trying to get Democratic and mostly Black votes thrown out in big cities in some of the key states, in Philadelphia, in Detroit, Kenosha, I think Kenosha was another one. He literally, lawsuit after lawsuit that he failed, or that that failed, that he, that got dropped, trying to get votes of those voters thrown out. And he, he tweeted saying, voter fraud in Detroit is rampant and has been for many years, completely 1000% unsubstantiated and false. It's a lie. It's a flat out lie. There is no evidence. There is no truth that there is rampant voter fraud in Detroit. What he was trying to do is throw out the mostly black vote. So Historically, there are so many problems with this, considering how hard we as a country had to fight to ensure everyone had equal access and everyone's vote counted in this country. To have a sitting president targeting African-American communities and trying to throw away their votes because he didn't like how they voted. That's how he tried to steal the election, by not counting black votes. That's a fact sources below. And it all started even before the election when the GOP in Harris County, Texas, right? I think it was Harris County, Texas. 
when they tried to toss 149,000, don't quote me exactly on that number, but 130, somewhere between 130,000, they tried to get that many votes tossed because those people voted through drive up polling places, which the Texas Supreme Court had said were legitimate and and valid and then the GOP went in and said no we decided it's not valid or we don't want it to be valid and so we're going to try to get those votes rescinded and of course they failed just like everything else they failed the eighth way Trump is st- trying to steal the election is by pressuring state legislatures to s- literally steal the election steal the votes away from Joe Biden and cast them for him for Trump He's literally calling them on the phone, inviting them to the White House, putting them up, allegedly putting them up in the Trump Hotel, lavishing them with expensive champagne and expensive dinners, literally to try to get them to not certify our vote, the vote of the American people. He's trying to uh, bully and harass them and influence them and maybe bribe them who knows he is trying to pressure these legislatures into stealing your vote away and giving it to him instead in these battleground states in which joe biden won by tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of votes donald trump is trying to put pressure on the republican people in charge to say, nope, nope, we're going to invalidate. Nope, nope, Joe Biden. Nope, I'm sorry that you voted for Joe Biden, but no, we're giving it to Trump. That's what he's trying to do. Yeah, that's exactly what he's trying to do. So pressure the lawmakers into stealing the vote away from Joe Biden and just stealing the vote away from you and giving it to Trump. That's his ninth strategy for trying to steal the election. And finally, number 10. Oh, I'm sorry, that was eight. That was eight. Number nine, the ninth way Donald Trump is trying to steal the election. And this one is something we're going to have to keep our eye on for the next 60 days or whatever. He has fired, I think it was November 13th, fired five top Pentagon officials and put in his own loyalists who have zero national security experience for the most part. He fired Pentagon officials and put in his own loyalists. Now, that was a huge red flag for most Americans to have a sitting president pull out career, professional, experienced security and military experts and put in his own people. If that doesn't terrify you, no matter, even if you voted for him, I don't know, Consider I was going to say, considering he's a lame duck president, although many of you don't think he's lame duck, maybe after this video, maybe, maybe. But for a president, even in the middle of a an election dispute, let's say, to be pulling out career Pentagon officials and putting your own people in, that's a huge red flag. That's how, it's another way he could attempt to steal the election, by violent means. But we'll see. A lot of people are saying that even if that's the case, he's not going to succeed. I love the fact that the General Mark Milley came out in a public statement and said, I think he was speaking to the American people as much as he was to military troops around the world and in the country. I think it was an affirmation for everyone that we as a military are loyal. We take an oath to the Constitution. We do not take an oath to protect a single person. Our loyalty is to the Constitution. I think that was huge, even though that was a couple days before Trump started firing everybody at the Pentagon and also threatening to fire the Hesper, I think her name is, the CIA director, and Ray from the FBI. He's basically, if he, if he, if he could, I don't know, he, I don't know if he couldn't at this point, but he really just wants to gut all security and national security and put his own people in for reasons that are happening behind the scenes as we speak. And I will do videos on what he's been doing to basically set the country up for failure under Biden to to wreak as much havoc as he can, not only in the United States, but worldwide. And I'm going to talk about that in another video. But that was number nine. 
the ninth way he's trying to potentially trying to steal the election is by installing his own people in military power. That's a scary thing. And finally, number 10, the 10th way Trump has been trying to steal the election is through us. By creating so much chaos, so much disinformation, so much conspiracy theories, so much aggravation and frustration. He tried this even before the election. I think he wanted people to get so fed up with it all that they just wouldn't vote. And I want to say, also, I tweeted this last night, congratulations to all of us. If this election were any closer, if it was close at all, we wouldn't be where we are today. We would still be in so much uncertainty and so much chaos. I mean, yeah, there is still a little bit, but boy, if this election was close, we'd be screwed. Frankly, we would be screwed. Our democracy still is hanging on by a thread. If this election had been closed, that thread would be threadbare. It would be just one tiny little piece of strand of that thread holding on. Uh, we would be in a lot of trouble. So congratulations to everyone who voted, who encouraged other people to vote, who volunteered, who got involved, who went to the poll, who worked at the polls. Uh, congratulations to everybody. We save democracy. This is what democracy is. We, the people, save democracy. And so that's number the back to number 10 way that Trump tried to steal the election was by creating so much chaos and doubt in the process. And he's still doing that. He's, by his lies and his disinformation and his constant barrage of just lies and misinformation about the election, he's trying to sow doubt. He's trying to make us all doubt the very foundation of our democracy, which is elections. And it's working. It's working for 70 plus million people in our society who believe him and don't believe the institutions that have been placed in this, in this society in our government for 250 years. They don't believe anybody but him and the people who support him. They are literally shutting out any voices of dissent. Anybody who tries to say, no, this isn't normal, this isn't right, that he's lying, they shut all of them out. So in some ways, Trump's efforts to sow division and doubt and make us doubt our, our own process of of democracy and retaining our democracy it's working because with even even when biden goes to the white house on january 20th like i said before we still have all these trump voters who are going to still believe that this this election was stolen by joe biden when in fact it was trump who's been trying to steal it right out from under our eyes this whole time so and it's, I'm sorry to say that Trump trying to delegitimize our elections is working for more than 70 million people in this country. And how do we get that back? How do we get back trust? How do we sow the, so SEW, <laughs> the relationships between us? And how do we become fellow Americans again? That is a big huge question the elephant in the room and it's something that's going to take time and i think it's going to take each one of us getting involved in one way shape or form to make it happen one thing is very clear though i just gave you 10 ways that donald trump has been and still is trying to steal this election away from the rightful winner joe biden in the amount of six million popular votes and a majority of big majority of the electoral college votes by doing these 10 things and participating in these 10 tactics to try to steal the election one thing is very clear donald trump has shown a 1000 percent reckless disregard for our democracy for our institutions for our country and for our American people, for us. Anyone who cares about this country would find, even, even if you disagree with the outcome of the election, which you shouldn't, any man, any person of moral integrity would admit that they lost and walk away for the sake of the country. And he's not doing that. So 
if anything, these 10 ways that he has tried to steal the election should just be another example of Donald Trump showing you who he is. He only cares about himself. Sure, he says he does this, he's doing this because of for you, because he wants to help you. That's not true. The only person Donald Trump wants to help is himself. He's got a lot to face when he gets out of office and 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 loses this so-called alleged immunity that Robert Mueller says he has. So there's a lot that's going to happen. Stay tuned. But in the meantime, yeah, Donald Trump uh, lost the election. Joe Biden is our president-elect, and Kamala Harris is our vice president-elect. And very exciting news to see this, but keep fighting the good fight. We have to keep fighting. We, ca we have to keep speaking up. It's time for liberals, progressives, Democrats to stop being so nice. And I'm not saying go out there and be mean or use violence, but not bowing to opposition. We need to start speaking up. We need to start speaking right to wrong. We need to start speaking truth to power. We need to start always, when somebody lies, challenge that lie. When somebody is spewing a conspiracy theory, who cares if it upsets them? We need to challenge them on that. So thank you all so much for being here. I have more videos to come. Thanks very much for being a part of this channel. It's really exciting. Have a wonderful and happy Thanksgiving. I will be doing a video tomorrow on my other channel, Carolyn's RV Life, to wish you all a happy Thanksgiving and uh, to do a special announcement. I have a special announcement about something really fun coming up soon. So thanks, thank you all. I'll see you next time. Subscribe and click the bell. And uh, my other channel, I have, a, I have a closing. I'll see you next time. So, uh, so I don't know what to do since I don't have that closing. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.